There we go. Actually, turn the microphone on, Dan. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me know if you can hear me now that I got the microphone actually on. Uh, Tay or Stephen, can you let me know in the chatty thing? Um, yeah, welcome, everyone. Uh, it is time. It is looking a bit loud, the microphone. Let's turn it down. How's that? How's that? How's that? Stuff that you think. I, I had this set up like an hour ago and I turned it all off. Um, welcome to the Figma launch. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of work. Uh, Figma Essentials will be going live in a minute. Uh, today I'm going to introduce the course briefly and then I will launch the course. We'll answer some of the big questions around Figma and I want to answer your questions about UX in general, Figma. Uh, so in the comments, either in the live stream on YouTube or in the comments on Facebook, throw in your questions because I'm going to spend some time answering them in a second. Okay, so uh, throw them in there and we'll gather them up and I'll answer them in a bit. Uh, all right. Can I get a thumbs up in the WhatsApp group just to make sure, uh, for bringing your laptop, just to make sure it's actually uh, appearing? We are live. I can check. I'm going to work the way I assume. I'm going to assume like it's going. Uh, all right. Um, first thing I want to do is uh, thank a couple of the people who put a lot of effort into the course. Um, so, like, I record it. I spend a lot of time preparing and recording it, but then uh, Jason and Taylor are our editors, and they spend a long time editing it. So thank you very much, uh, Jason and Taylor, for that. And also for uh, Vic, who helps, well, put a big effort into reviewing the course. She's the UX designer at... Uh, bring your laptop. So it's really handy to have a UX designer review your UX course, but it's like two weeks of solid reviewing. It's a long course. Uh, so thank you for you two for uh, bring your laptop team for the help. And um, let's talk about who this course is for. So this course is aimed at people who haven't done UX before. And if you've done any of my other courses before, you'll know that it's not it's not like baby level all the way through, but you just need to know that we'll start right at the essentials, right at the basic understanding, okay, some of the terminologies around UX, things like that. Okay, so if you are a little bit scared about the word user experience design, this course is for you. Okay, and if you've never used uh, Figma before, okay, this course is for you as well. But for those of you who have dabbled a little bit or have used some of the other competitors like XD or, I don't know, Sketch or um, Envision Studio, something like that, uh, you will find it's not, you know, it's not just a basic course. I've called it essentials, but basically it's every single thing that's a Figma. <laughs> um, I could have split it into advanced course, but I ended up just going all the way through. So that's why it's like 111 videos. So it's a big course. So even if you are reasonably experienced as a UX designer, you'll be able to get loads out of this course. We start the basics, move all the way through uh, to the advanced stuff. And let's talk about certificates. I'm going to show you it because as, as the course is going live in a minute on byol.com, bringyourlaptop.com, my site, okay? Um, but along with it is at the same time we're launching is we're launching the, the certificate for it. So I can show you that. I'm going to click on that. Oh, look at that. That, <laughs> that is the certificate you can earn by doing, you have to not only watch all the videos, which we'll check, um, but you also have to submit all the class projects, okay? And then once you've submitted them all, um, yeah, you can um, yeah uh, apply for a certificate and get awarded with this beautiful thing. Um, so that'll go live at the exact same time. And um, other things that will happen is, um, what else? The class projects, there's 23 of them. A little bit more than normal, but I guess a little bit smaller. Um, and also I want to show you this. Um, so... People always ask for, uh, you know, uh, class projects and portfolio pieces. So I've kind of taken this a little bit further, just like the next logical progression. Okay, and let me show you this. So this is the random project generator. If you've done my XD course or any of my other courses, you'll notice that a lot of the class projects I give you are the same thing. So people are doing the exact same project. Everyone know Maynooth? Uh, give me a shout out in the, uh, <laughs> in the comments for Maynooth Furniture. Woohoo! Okay, a lot of people have done that. So what I've done in this one is we'll all do this exact same uh, like 
techniques and tools, but we'll be using our own uh, client name and product. So there's this thing called the random project generator that uh, the Bring Your Laptop team put together. Okay, thanks Vic and Malcolm for getting this ready. And you can put in your name, like Dan, and then put in where you're living. I'm in Croke in Ireland, and it will give us all the unique, uh, you know, uh, persona, client, thing, I'm doing Dan's handbags. <laughs> okay, and it just means that we'll all be able to practice, but you'll be building this for your own client. You can design a logo if you want, but we'll all have unique stuff ready for a portfolio. Okay, so that's kind of one of the perks for this one here. And keep those questions rolling in if you have got a question about UX, about this course, and anything, me in general, and it'll get lumped into the Q&A. Um, so let's go back to my live. So um, there's a shortcut sheet that's part of it as well, okay? All the Figma shortcut sheets you can print off and do. And um, I'm gonna show you, so I just wanna kinda like show you what we're making in this course. And instead of just kinda like hacking around Figma, I'm just gonna play you, it's about, it's less than a minute long video, okay, of the things that we're actually doing. So I'm practicing this tech, live technology as well. So stick with me for exactly uh, one minute and I'm gonna show you kind of what's in the We'll describe the brief and how to work with a UX persona. Then you'll learn how to create really simple wireframes. From there, we learn how to implement colors and images properly in your high fidelity mockups. You'll learn the do's and don'ts for choosing fonts for web and mobile apps. You'll learn how to create icons, buttons, and all sorts of UI components. You'll learn all the scary terms like component sets, constraints, and multi-dimensional variants. <laughs> They're all very easy oh, once so you get to know them. We'll also make our lives easier by using free UI kits and plugins for Figma to speed up our workflow. We'll build a simple style guide ready for colleague or client handoff. You'll know how to make both simple and advanced micro interactions, page transitions, and animations. Before the end of this course, you'll have fully interactive prototypes ready for user testing, all the way through to collaborating with other team members and exporting the right files ready for handoff to your developer or software engineer. And that is kind of just the visuals of things we're gonna be making. We're gonna be making a mobile website app. We'll also do a desktop version. But yeah, yo, those are all the things we're gonna cover in this course. It's pretty robust as far as courses go. Um, I've done that, I've done that. All right, nothing but to launch the course. I'm gonna do it in three, two, one, you ready? Three, two, one. Yay, the course is live on bringerandlaptop.com. Uh, so go check it out, uh, or byol.com. If you're not a member there, you'll get the Figma course. Okay, it's $12 a month or 84 a year, US dollars. You'll get the Figma course. You'll also get access to the kind of, uh, competitor to Figma, which is XD. Okay, there's a full course on that as well if you wanna do both. Okay, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, After Effects, Premiere Pro, uh, there's an animation cast. There's, there is a lot on there. And there's essentials and advanced versions of all of those and they're all for that $12 a month. So yeah. There's also podcasts on there, okay, uh, with, yeah. Um, yeah, lots of podcasts. Uh, there's a bit of exclusive podcasts for Bring Your Laptop people. And what else is on there? There is challenges and certificates for all the different other products as well. So yeah, go check it out, bringyourlaptop.com. Uh, one of the questions will always be, uh, when is it out on Udemy and Skillshare? It'll be coming out really soon, two weeks-ish. Okay, so it goes, goes live now on Bring Your Laptop and will come out really soon on the other platforms. And yeah, so the launch is done. I am going to do a little bit of Q&A. So throw in your questions now. There's only two or three there. So if you've got a question, I'm gonna answer it, because I've only got two to answer. And um, let me just check, make sure everything's running okay. Facebook has gone off. Facebook does that. There you go, oh well. <laughs> uh, all right, so the first question is from uh, Restas, uh, and it is, what is the best plugin for Figma, please? Best plugin, uh, urgent Facebook has gone I don't know how to turn it back on. Sorry, Facebook. <laughs> it's just me and you to me, uh, YouTube here. Um, so what is the best plugin? Uh, what is the best plugin? Um, uh, the most used one is, shoot, what's it called? The content one. 
It has the avatars and it is the, I'll stick it in the <laughs> description where I remember the name. Man, though, if you haven't used Fugan before, one of the big perks for it is all the plugins. There are so many plugins. There's a plugin for everything. Like if you need the avatar pictures of random humans, okay, it's easy to go find a plugin. Uh, if you need to place Lauren Ipson, go find a plugin. If you need to add video to Figma, which doesn't do natively, you can find uh, you know, a plugin that will help you do that. It's kind of one of the perks and one of the benefits of Figma is there is a huge big public, uh, sorry, Figma community making plugins. And I'm about to start out with UI UX. Should I do the Adobe XD course or this Figma course? That is a really good question and it's probably gonna get asked loads. Figma versus XD versus Sketch versus Envision Studio. And um, basically you wanna be doing Figma or XD. Those other ones, are, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just not very industry standard. They used to be, Sketch used to be the only one. And if you're using Sketch, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I don't know, Figma is the most, uh, if you're looking for a job now and you look on you know, UX design uh, job application boards, it's gonna be mainly Figma. Okay, and some XD. Okay, very few people are asking for those other ones. And um, in terms of the actual product itself, and um, they're they're very comparable. XD is newer, so maybe doesn't have some of the some of the finer details, but then it, ex it excels in some other parts. So if, if I was you and I was doing them, I would do both of them. And um, the nice thing about doing one and then the other is that they are the same thing at their heart. Okay, if you take away the little features and the way that they price them, they, the products are very easy to go between the two. Okay, they use a very similar terminology, a very similar structure to the software. It's not gonna be jarring. So you can do one and then flick to the other. And that's what I do so that you're covering both bases and make the decision for yourself. And probably if you are looking for a job at a bigger company, Figma would be a better one. If you're gonna be a freelancer, XD is generally a better one because it's already wrapped up in the price of um, your Adobe subscription. You know, If you need Photoshop and Illustrator as well, you might as well learn XD. So there you go. Figma is more industry standard at the moment and XD is catching up. There you go. Do both. Like another one, and uh, which one do you like the most for Figma Essentials? So, Another one is uh, Javad, which is the best computer for Figma. That's the, another big uh, thing about Figma is that Figma, you can use in a browser. XD, you download a bit of software like you're normal, normally used to, right? You download, uh, you know, download the software and you, know, you use it. Okay, whereas Figma is web-based. So you use a browser. You don't need to install anything on your computer. You can if you want to, I did, because I don't know, I feel like it needs to be installed on my computer, but basically it's just installing a web browser that you can open up. <laughs> okay, but you can use Figma just in, the, in a Chrome web browser, nothing else, you don't need to download. And um, uh, Dana, uh, do you cover grids and why do people use them? Uh, that's, uh, that's one that always trips me up. So grid systems are useful for consistency. They're not, like a grid system isn't, if you're designing a website, a 12 uh, column grid, a columns are better than square grids because basically your design is going to be implemented by the web developer. He or she is going to use a, a grid system, generally something kind of Flexbox-ish or a bootstrappy. Have a look at them. You don't have to learn what Flexbox is or what bootstrap is or one of the kind of uh, frameworks are, but they will use 12 columns, okay? It, because it's easily dividable to six, to four, okay? You can divide up for the different, you know, phone versus tablet versus desktop, okay? So for web development, often it's just columns you need. When you go into app design, say iOS, uh, they will use a grid system, okay? It's kind of how they space things out, okay? When the developer's building it for you. So you don't necessarily need to, but to, al to allow consistency, so everything is like eight pixels spaced around, okay? it will blend in with other apps and all the defaults for the iOS builder, okay, the developer. So yeah, grids are there to help you for consistency and also the underlying technology often to make things consistent and simple as well, will use the grid system. Did it help? Hope that helped. 
Uh, but yes, I cover grid systems in Figma. <laughs> I do, I do. Okay, uh, Rally Boha, uh, what is your inspiration in terms of creating UI and web design? What I get inspired, like the most exciting part, probably for all designers, is that first part. It is the understanding the brief, like getting the brief is the tricky, awkward bit. Sometimes you get a crappy brief and sometimes you get a good brief. Okay, but once you've cleared up the brief of what it is, made it good, or been given a good one, then the exciting bit is the, the ideation, the like mood boards and what could be in it, the back and forth with the client, that sort of stuff. You know, I don't get like inspired by things that I'm looking at as such. It's more like the project starts blooming and I basically it has to go like this. It goes from brief into this big massive thing of all this potential and screenshots and things that I want to copy and change and do myself. And then it has to come back to reality somewhere in here. And that's when a bit of the, the grind, grind's the wrong word, the hard work or the work of the designer happens of like what actually gets included. Can I use, you know, pneumorphism? You know, can I do this thing over here? Or, you know, is it right for the um, persona there? So that's where I get my inspiration. I love that blooming part out of the brief. Rosie, is it necessary to learn sketch too? No, I would say learn Figma and XD. And even if you decide like, ah, oh, I think Figma is more appropriate for me right now, I'm gonna do that. Just go through XD, give it a kind of a, um, okay. just give it a kind of a, a look through, just so that you're not like taken aback or like, so that when you do go to the job and they say, can you use XD? You can say, yeah, I, I can. Cause I had a go at it and I understand it. I might even not be super fluent in it yet, but between the job application and when I start the job, you're, you're doing this in your head, okay? You're gonna go off and do Dan's course on whatever the other thing is. If you've done XD, go learn Figma. If you've done Figma, learn XD. It, it feels like there's these two separate things and I've either gotta go Mac or PC and I'm never gonna do you know one or the other. Whereas they're just the very similar, you know, you're on a very similar path. The tools are basically all have the same icons uh, there's just like the way it works is slightly different and you're going to have your flow better in one and the other and it's not like they will flip as soon as you start using xd more than figma you will end up liking figma more and vice versa there you go uh ephs do you know what percentage of the industry may be using figma versus uh xd and um, vic can you there was a i don't know it's what you'll find is the bigger companies are mostly using XD and then the smaller design houses and freelancers are using XD. But I know we found a graph on which is which and I'll see if I can dig it out. And if I can, I'll link it in the description later on. I'll get, Victoria, do you remember the graph? You probably do. Uh, if you can find it, it doesn't have to be right now, but um, throw it in, uh, throw it to me so I'll it, put it in the description for later on. If you're watching this later on, it'll be there already. Um, uh, ASEAN, um, is Figma, as Figma is a web-based application, does it mean it should be lightweight compared to XD? And does it also mean that it can run Figma on low-end systems? I have never run it on low-end systems, so I don't want to say yes, but both of them, XD and Figma, are very big on going fast. Like, the problem with both of them is when you throw lots of images in and videos, Okay, uh, things start slowing down. Is it more lightweight than XD? I don't notice it. Honest truth is I don't notice it, but I have a really good computer. Like, I have a really fast Mac. Um, so yes, I'm not the best person to ask. Other than yes, they're, they're both trying to be, and because it's web-based, hmm. hmm. <laughs> I'm not a great person to ask. I've always been using it on a really fast computer. And there we go. Uh, Fabian, uh, can I transform my figure, uh, Figma website project into a real website? Uh, no, basically Figma, XD, any of these UX prototyping tools give you very little in the way of building a website afterwards. They'll give you some things, okay? They'll give you scraps of color codes, measurements, the images that you need, but no, you'll either need to move to some, if you want to build it yourself and you don't want to learn code, something like um, Webflow or what's the other one? Squarespace or Wix, 
Okay, one of those ones. So no, it basically this is a middle bit. Take the brief, build it in Figma. Why would you build it in Figma, not just build it in a website? It's mainly because of speed. Okay, to actually code a website, even in something like um, Webflow, it, it takes a long time. Okay, there's a lot of restrictions and implementation takes a long time. So you're very quick, okay, and you can send it to the client. It can look and feel like a website really quickly. You've got to explain that, that it's only a mock-up of a website, okay, and then if they want to change something, it's very quick and easy. Doing it in code afterwards, you know, like if I go to our developer and I say, Malcolm, hey, can you quickly change this? He's like, yeah, sure. And he'll do it quickly, but his quickly is an hour from now, okay, or two days depending on how bad a change it is. But in Figma or XD, it is seconds to minutes to get things rearranged. So you do it in this kind of intermediate program to then hand it off. That's the holy grail is to just design it straight and then you know straight and say make website. It's not there yet. We will get there. Things like um, yeah, there will be some sort of integration later on, but at the moment no. Figma passes on. Okay, Mio's in fat. Uh, do you plan to update the Adobe XD course? Yep, that's what I'm doing right next. So I'll starting that one basically after this comes out and Adobe Max is out at the moment. Well, it's live next week. So I'm busy making update videos for YouTube. So make sure if you are watching this, subscribe to the channel because I've got a big update video, kind of an all-in-one, all the updates um, for Adobe Max. Um, and that will be coming out Tuesday next week. Okay, that's when Adobe Max goes live. Also check out Adobe Max, it's free. Okay, it is a huge big creativity conference by Adobe. I'm one of the speakers there, so you can search for my name. It's a Photoshop course on productivity for designers, workflow for designers. You'll be able to sign up for that. I'll be there in the live chat when that goes live as well. Um, so yes, XD is next on my list. Uh, EPHS, uh, do you show how to go from Figma to building a site in say Webflow or WordPress in your video? In other words, do you prepare the prototype getting ready for building? We do a developer handoff, okay? Basically only on the UX designer side of like how to give the UX uh, the developer what they need, but I don't go through the Webflow like building part. That is what I'm gonna do right after XD. I wanna do this whole, I want Figma and XD, which are like the two competing UX programs. And then I wanna get into Webflow and um, Elementor, which is WordPress. Okay, and I want to take the thing we build in Figma and make it real in real life. So yes, yes, I'm going to do it. No, it's not ready now, but that's the intent for both the XD and the Figma courses to, for them to move on to one or two of those most popular web building programs so you can do the whole thing. Design and then build. All right, Marina, uh, is code handy for UX UI design? UX UI design, super handy. Not essential, okay? If you are a coder and you want to get into UX design, you've got a head start because there's a lot of things that you'll design as a newbie UX designer that just makes the web developer's job super hard. <laughs> you know, you'd be like, oh, just do that. And they'll be like, wow, that's going to be a tricky one to do. Okay. And whereas if you've got a bit of understanding of code, it doesn't have to be much, you can make the job easier for the developer. Okay. Not super easy, but um, it's good to know some code. Okay, I've got a course on, it's called Web Design Essentials. That will get you to a point enough to understand things like Flexbox and kind of padding and positioning and stuff to, to really be able to build a, design something in Figma that's going to be easily built in code later on. So you don't need to, but it's handy. So even if you don't plan on being a coder and you don't want to, even if you just watch, it doesn't have to be my course, but just other people's coding courses on basic HTML, CSS, basically you need HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript to kind of see how things work. And really, as a designer, UX designer, especially for web, looking at CSS, okay, and the styles and some of the, yeah, and some of the frameworks that might get used, okay? Like Bootstrap is an easy one and a common one. Um, yeah, that's my answer to that. Uh, Fatten, uh, your keyboard though, <laughs> we think, uh, we need Link. Yeah, this keyboard, it's so good, listen to it, ready? Okay, and um, who makes this one? Keytron, I think, I don't know. Keytron makes it, you can change the key, like the clickety things, and I went for the like, I bought separate keys underneath these keys to make them make that noise. Oh, that noise is great. 
Um, yes, thank you. Um, Java, Javid, um, is there any course that will come for free in the future? What I normally do for these courses is in a few weeks, I'll give away the first snippet of Figma for the people that can't afford it. And it'll get you going. I'm basically gonna make a little mini course at the beginning of Figma when I make it, knowing that I'm gonna give a little bit away for free, enough to get you going and get you started and doing stuff. And then the rest of the course you can go off and pay for and do if you want to, but that's not for a while. It's probably a month or two away. Um, but yes, I'll give away bits and pieces, the first little chunk so that you can do it. Um, Thomas, what is your favorite program and why? Favorite program? Out of all of the programs or Figma and XD? I don't know. I'll end up probably still using XD more, not because it's better, but because I don't work in a larger team and I'm already paid for it as part of Creative Cloud because I'm an Adobe guy. And, but because I've done this Figma course, I've kind of dipped into so much now that I'm way better and faster at Figma now. So the next job I'm probably gonna do in Figma because I just wanna do the one I'm most capable of because I don't, I don't really care about the software so much as like, can I get to the end result quickly? And at the moment I am Figma all through my brain. So I'm gonna use that. And, um, but yeah, that's my favorite program. And um, in terms of other programs, video is my kind of like thing at the moment, doing this whole video thing, I really like it. I love a bit of motion graphics, After Effects, Premiere Pro. Photoshop, I did these Photoshops for, I don't have a favorite. <laughs> I like making stuff and the software comes along for the ride. Um, all right, Brett, do you have any courses on actual web development and not design? Do you do any web dev or just design? As someone trying to get in development right now, I'm starting with Webflow, good, bad idea. So web development and design. So web design, you might end up you can call yourself a web designer if you're just using Figma and designing it like pixels and type. You're also a web designer if you are doing HTML and CSS, okay? Kind of actually building some code, but actually you're building the visual graphic interface, okay? And development is the back end, okay? And no way, uh, I, no, I don't do it. I, <laughs> I pass my designs on to a developer and, and get them to build it, okay? so. In terms of your question about is Webflow getting you into web development? No, it is getting you into web design, but not development. You need to start looking at like PHP and other kind of, um, you know, developer, developer coding rather than like HTML and CSS is not really coding. It's kind of markup, okay? And you wanna, you know, you can be a front-end designer and get quite far into development, okay? Like a front-end developer when you start looking at things like JavaScript and kind of, you're still working with the interface, okay? But it's the interaction, okay? Kind of the, uh, yeah, the, the interaction through JavaScript. So, no, if you wanna be a developer, find out if you wanna be a developer or, or a front-end, you know, a front-end dev or a back-end dev and research those two terms and then a, and a web designer and see what you wanna do. If you wanna be a designer, totally get into that. Uh, front-end dev, nope. Back-end dev, no, not with Webflow. Webflow is kind of circumventing those um, jobs um, Al Bandari, does the course cover design of photography, color, shadows, and speed for creating a website? Yes, it does. We get like, because it's essentials, it's kind of UX essentials as well as Figma essentials. There's gonna be no assumption of like anything really. Like, I'll show you how to, where to get fonts, what fonts, font pairing. We'll go through colors, where to get colors. We'll look at briefly things like, um, yeah, no, we do go, we go through all of that sort of stuff, like shadows, we'll do some fancy things like, um, you know, that kind of like glass styles and the kind of pneumorphic design and you'll get, you'll be able to make anything you see after you do this course. Victoria, uh, do you think about Figma files being all in the cloud, just uh, working? What do you think about Figma files being all in the cloud? Working just in the cloud Working, in, working just in the cloud and XD2. I think, yeah, I don't mind. Cloud docs I'm coming around to. Like most of us out there are probably used to going file save and having them on their computer. And Adobe wants us to do it. Figma forces us to do it. Figma is, when you save it, it's not on your computer. It is in the cloud. 
And when, when you know that intellectually, it feels bad. But once you start using Figma, you forget that that's a problem because it's just, you get a file open and there it is. The fact it's not stored on your computer and it's saved by somebody else's computer, I've gotten used to it. It took me a very long time though. Same with Photoshop. And Photoshop, you can save to the cloud. Nobody does. Well, I, I say nobody. I didn't for a long time, but there's just so many perks. If your computer gets stolen, it's still there. Is it secure? It's secure than my computer sitting in my house. <laughs> Much secure. Um, is it, uh, you know, does it mean I can get it from everywhere? It does. It means I can log on to your computer and find my Figma file. Let us log into figma.com and find them. There they are. So no at the beginning, yes now. I'm totally happy with cloud-based files. It's, you can save them to the desktop. You can go file save as and save a .fig file to your computer but it loses a lot of the perks of being a cloud document. And um, like version history is super cool. Because it's in the cloud, somehow Figma will save every version of it every time you change it. And it auto saves. Yeah, that's my answer. Um, Phoenix, uh, do or will you make a JavaScript course? Probably not, it's too far out of my um, skill set. I can copy and paste JavaScript. <laughs> that's probably not the course you want. Uh, classic arrays, is it possible to get the HTML and CSS code from the Figma design? Yes, the CSS is mildly helpful and the HTML isn't. So no, is probably the answer to your question. You can get CSS out of it, um, but you can't get the, like, the structure of the page in HTML. And um, basically you get every unit, say you've got a, an image with a blocker type, you've got some sort of card that you've made and it's got a box, there's an image, there's a button and there's so all of that they'll all come out, like you'll get the CSS for the text, but it won't give you the whole thing as a unit, okay? I know why, because, you know, it depends on how you're gonna build it, um, but no, no, you just get little little bits. Uh, Krioma, uh, for the XD user design course, you use the dimensions 1366. Uh, for web design, would there be any videos using 1920 or something like that. And for designing a, a website, you're unlikely to get, like, you wanna build something that fits the most generic size and 1920, which is um, video size, 1920 by 1080, is HD size and it's very uncommon, like laptop size. So for a web design, I don't know anybody that's doing it, it's just, that's just a video size. I know on your phone and lots of things that it is, uh, you know, 1980 by uh, 1920 by 1080, but no, it needs to be smaller. And even then, when you're designing it, you're designing for like, say, this is my, what is it, 1366, okay? Which is a generic kind of 15 inch laptop screen-ish. It's just inside. When you're designing it, you're gonna have to design it for this size, this size, this size, and this size. You just start with something generic and you'll have to make a bigger size in XD and Figma and a smaller size in Figma so that it can expand and contract depending on the device, depending if it's mobile, tablet, desktop, super big, shiny, swooshy one, okay, 5K. And um, so no, you just pick something in the middle and it's not as hard and fast there. And so, Hama, uh, can you help me? When I launch Adobe XD, it says an error 5719, no idea. Sorry. Uh, yo, will your courses prepare us for entry level jobs? Yes. And um, what you'll need to take out of this course is I'm gonna teach you the software. I'm gonna fold in terminology, some expectations, but there's gonna be lots of words in here that you're gonna to have to go and research. Like when I talk about uh, task flow versus user flow, I'm gonna talk about it for about two minutes <laughs> to give you a general understanding of it. You then have to scribble that down and then go and find a whole bunch of medium posts on the topic and you know uh, videos on it to kind of, you need to build out, I'm gonna give you the, the, the core of getting started and then all the stuff that you're like, I don't really know what he meant by that or I kind of get it, wonder if there's anything more and go out from that. It's a software course. Yes, it'll get you an entry level job. What you probably need to do, like the software, you'll be better than probably most people using Figma. The trouble is going to be understanding the expectations on you as a new junior UX designer, but in terms of software, you're gonna ace it. You will be better than anybody else, I bet you, even the senior designers, because 
I, I teach everybody everywhere. And the amount of like going into like big fancy places with the best designers in the world. And they're still using the software the same way that they learned it at university or college or certificate degree, wherever they learned it. Because they don't get time to go and spend time doing a course because they're busy doing stuff. So technically, you will be amazing. Uh, in terms of experience, you'll be still at zero. So you'll have to do a lot of figuring that out. Uh, Tyler, I'm having a hard time designing my UX UI design portfolio in VIX. It's not as flexible as Figma when it comes to design. Any tips? That is always the drama of going from something like Figma, where you're like draggy drag and everything's great, and then moving it into the real world, okay, with something like Wix, is basically the flexibility, is the like the break points, okay? What does it look like at this screen? Here, here, why can't it break down here? So I don't know specifically what's going wrong with your particular one. I just know that if you do a little bit like, if you did a, you might already have this skill, but people that don't do the Web Essentials course or something similar, somebody else's course or some sort of YouTube video on HTML and CSS and, and things like, I said it before, Bootstrap and Flexbox. And just so that you've got an understanding, so when you're designing, I know when I'm designing something, I'm laying it out, I'm laying it out, and I'm like, I'll put that there. And I'm like, actually, it's going to cause me trouble. So I'm just going to put it down here. So you end up compromising on your design early on and being okay with that because you know later on, it's going to save yourself some problems um, because Wix under the hood is using a framework that can't be changed, whereas Figma has no boundaries. So that is always the trouble. So a little bit of understanding of um, you know web design can be helpful. Uh, Subham, any good free software for UI UX apart from XD? Um, so Figma is free to a point. You can do drafts for free. You can get quite far with free version of Figma. Okay, um, so that would be the best. Like I wouldn't go anywhere else. I'd you know do Figma. You can use it free. I'll, in the course, I'll show you where you get to. I, I do most of the course in Figma and the free version. I, it's only towards the end, like at video 80 or something, that I start showing you, okay, now here's the reason you might pay for this, okay? And it's not like as a freelancer or a learning, it's not, uh, you know, all the extra tools are basically amazing tools for working in teams. And if you're a freelancer, you can get around them. If you're on your own or learning, you can get around them. But as soon as you start working in the company, all those extra collaboration tools are worth paying for. So you're not paying for them. Now, Dorian, will you offer any spots for mentorship? Mentor, mentorship? I don't. Kind of, yeah, no. That's a decision I've had to make. At the beginning, I kind of toyed with the idea and did a little bit. And it's just the volume. Like, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of students. So and picking a few, I feel like I can support the community, design community better by making these videos. Doing these live streams where 100 people can be viewing. How many people are viewing right now? I don't know. Um, on the live stream, 20, 30, 40. But in, you know, like I know tens of thousands of people will probably see this video and mentoring is, yeah, a two single, I used to teach. I did it for a very long time. At universities for Bring Your Laptop used to be an in-classroom thing and I love it, but I feel like I can contribute more by doing these more, uh, a little less personal, I know. I try and make them personal in these classes, okay? So I look you in the eye when I'm looking in the camera, trying to make it personal, but I can affect more people this way. Um, Fabian, do you know Zeppelin for XD? Yeah, Zeppelin for XD and Figma. Uh, I don't know very well. It's a, it's a really good handoff tool for developers. In my workflow, uh, what ends up happening is, you know, we've got a great relationship with our developer, Malcolm, and our UX designer, and the handoff is reasonably succinct because there's only two people. It's when you're kind of preparing things for larger, oh, 175 people watching. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> that's could be the highest ever. Hey, and uh, so no, I don't know very well. It's a great program, but I couldn't give you like special advice on it, um, but it is great for handing over to developers, especially when you're working in larger teams. Um, so we don't work in, a, I don't work in a larger team, so I don't use that one. Uh, Rosie. Uh, will we do also animation to in Figma? Yep, totally do some animation in Figma. And yeah, we do animation in Figma. It's fun. 
Um, like XD, it's a little bit clunky. It's not like uh, Adobe, like uh, After Effects, when you're doing full animation, or Adobe Animate, where you've got a timeline. You're kind of fudging it a little bit, but you can do cool micro interactions and stuff like XD in Figma, yes. Um, EPHS, does Figma have a good set of tools to design responsibly? Uh, I often need to sh show how a page will shift uh, when a browser is resized. Yes. And Figma does a really good res has has really good tools for responsiveness, probably better than XD. Um, yeah, it does. It's really good. And often you still have to just show the you know like if the, if your question there was like how do you show it, you still have to kind of like show it expanded out. But the cool thing about it is you can make modules, uh, you know, make components uh, components says, that do adapt and adjust really nicely. Um, so when you are mocking them up as a UX designer, you can make them adapt really nicely, um, but end up handing them over to the developer. You need to kind of smear them all out so they can see them all. Um, but yeah. Um, thing of thing of Lynn. I just started using Figma instead of Adobe XD. Are variants in Figma almost the same as components? Are there any differences? Yeah, variants are, there's actually components in Figma and component sets, and then you get to variables. Uh, they're very similar, yes. Yes, they're the exact same trajectory, doing the same thing. Figma's probably a little bit more advanced with its variants, um, but XD has some, does everything you need to as well in terms of its components and kind of, I even forget the terms once I've gone to Figma for so long. And, um, but yes, they have uh, different actions and different things you can do within those components, but you're right. Uh, variables and components are hitting the same, doing the same jobs in the different programs. Um, all right, Zen, is TypeScript good for UI for a website? Um, is TypeScript good? I don't know what we're talking about is, yeah, I'll skip that one. Um, Edel? Hey Dan, do you have a course or class about micro interactions and web animations? Not specifically, but in this Figma course, we go through micro interactions. We make some cool ones. And basically, I teach you how to fish, how to make them, and then basically you can make any of them. Yeah, we do quite a bit uh, micro interactions in it. Um, yeah. Um, Ali, will you be doing an essential and advanced course for Adobe After Effects and Cinema 4D? We'll definitely do uh, After Effects Essentials and Advanced. I've got one. I've got uh, After Effects um, for Infographics and Motion Graphics. And those are basically an Essentials course if you are looking to do one, but I don't have an Advanced one. Yes, I'll be doing them because nobody seems to believe I do an After Effects course unless it's called Essentials. <laughs> so go to the Motion Graphics one. It's basically Essentials. Okay, but um, yes, I'll be doing that. In Cinema 4D, I'm probably not going to. I'm probably going to... Adobe have bought a whole bunch of other 3D software, and I feel like Adobe uh, Cinema 4D, I've always been reluctant because Cinema 4D is such a different thing from Adobe, and they've always just licensed it and kind of like smushed it into After Effects, and it wasn't a, I don't know, glamorous kind of connection. And Adobe have gone and bought, um, they call them Substance, Substance now. Go check it out. They, only, they basically bought a bunch of products and have relaunched them last month, um, and I think they're called Substance, they've renamed them, but... I'm probably going to go down that route because they're quite advanced tools already. People are using them in the industry already. Adobe now own them. And I want to do 3D in those ones. Um, yeah. Fun stuff coming up. I can't talk about lots of stuff because I'm like, Adobe Max is next week. There'll be some cool stuff that I want to show with you and share with you, but I can't till next week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and I have got a review of all the Adobe stuff coming out and you can watch that video and I can tell you then. Okay, we're ready. And the next one, uh, Javad, what's the time? Yeah, we'll go for another five minutes, eh? Um, oh, little interlude. Look at what I found today. Can you see that? Look at that. Can you see the date there? 1980, uh, 1998, this is my high school, okay? And I got awarded, I didn't even know I had this. I went through my, I just found a file and it fell out and I was like, I completed, completed a 20 hour course of computer graphics with distinction uh, using CorelDRAW. Uh, let me know in the comments, how many people 
have used Corral Draw. Uh, Corral Draw, then I went to Freehand, yeah, and then to Illustrator. Uh, and it did Tools, I learned Tools, Menu Bars, Extrude, and Envelope Tools. Clip Art, which you'll notice is kind of like a different font in true Clip Art font. Like everything else is uh, Arial, and then Clip Art is a bigger full star, a bigger bullet point, and is written in Times New Roman. <laughs> I learned Clip Art. Uh, design process, including freehand drawings, uh, completed and finished art series, blah, 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 by my um, graphic design teacher, Mrs. Gordon. I don't know her first name. <laughs> Mrs. Gordon, thank you. Um, that was a long time ago. Um, all right, other questions? Uh, I've answered that one already, please. Nico, please add certificates for Illustrator XD and After Effects. We are totally working on those. Uh, Brett, do you ever read books on UI UX, or are you in the age where books are not really part of education in this industry, or do you use books? Any recommendations for somebody getting started in the industry? This is not a reflection of the industry. I don't read books. Don't. Listen to podcasts. I get all information from podcasts and videos. That's the way I consume my knowledge. So no, I don't have books to recommend to you. Um, I consume podcasts and yeah. I'd, to be honest, like I don't do a lot of, I find problems, then I go out and research them and continue on. I don't, um, I don't know. Is it because I've got some experience in it? Or maybe it's just the way I'm wired. I don't, I don't know, but I end up, the way I end up finding out stuff is I'll either hear a term that I don't know. And I'm like, hmm, what the hell is that? They'll come up in this course, okay? And I'll go, <laughs> like in these videos, I'll be like, if you've asked me a question about that, I should learn that. <laughs> and I go off and learn it. Um, I don't go learning for learning's sake in a lot of the design industries that I'm involved in, probably because I've done it for a while now. And I feel like, yeah, I go off and problem solve rather than um, learn. But I do love learning and I love going and exploring new things. And, uh, you know, like uh, I love doing uh, like the animation. I'm kind of, I like animation, I'm not very good at it. So I did Lucas Ridley's um, uh, you know, animation course, and I go off and learn from a professional in a well-structured video course, and don't, that's on bringyourlaptop.com as well. Okay, um, it's called Animation for Beginners. You just learn, like that's why I like learning through videos. Yeah. Um, Kushbu, uh, can this course work well for portfolio creation and content? This is the perfect one. Uh, remember the randomprojectgenerator.com is that I built this so that you're going to build great stuff for your portfolio, and I. It's the first course where I've actually made it like, I want everyone to have unique stuff rather than doing very similar stuff. Uh, Dave, I desperately need Figma best practices for large companies and design teams. I don't have that, mainly because I work in small teams um, and yeah, I don't have that huge big company experience. Like I know the software really well, but working with larger teams, Figma, if you are into it and you're, it sounds like you already know Figma, um, reasonably well jump to the teams base in the course and see what information you can get there um but yeah like you'll see in the course we do a basic design spec but we don't get into like a full-blown kind of um design system why because it's the essentials and b i'm not that qualified because i don't hand off a ux design process to you know a company of 500 people I do it to a company of a couple. <laughs> All right, what's the time? This is going to be the last one. All right, roll the dice. Who's got the last question? All right. I'm trying to decide which one to do. There's a couple of them. I want to end on a bang. Oh. oh, there's another one coming in. No, there's not. Do I have one? All right, uh, let's pick one of them. Okay, between XD and Figma, which is better for micro interactions and animation capabilities? Probably Figma. Probably Figma, but know that both of them are bad. 
They're not animation tools. They'll do things. They'll do on off. They'll do this or that. There is um Oh, okay. Cool. And um, so yeah, you end up um yeah. They do some, they do micro interactions good enough, but they are not full animation tools. So yeah, there you go. So Figma a little bit. And um, so we're going to wrap up there. What I'm going to do is um, right after this video, the full intro for the um, Figma course will premiere on this channel. Could you go and watch it? It's only a couple of minutes. Even if you just watch it to give it a thumbs up and add a comment in there. Um, so check the premiere on the channel now. I'd appreciate it because the YouTube algorithm likes it. Even if you kind of already know about Figma course now, uh, go check out that um, video. Give it a like, give it a comment. I'd appreciate that. And yeah, Figma, it is launched now on bringerlaptop.com. Um, you can sign up, it's $12 a month or 84 for the year, okay? Along with that subscription cost, that membership, you get access to Figma and XD courses, so you can decide which one you like. Photoshop Essentials Advanced, Illustrator Essentials Advanced, uh, Animation Beginners, uh, After Effects, Motion Graphics, After Effects, Infographics, Premiere Pro Essentials and Advanced. Uh, there is lots of Dreamweaver ones, Web Design Essentials. There is a lot there. Um, so yeah, like the video if you are leaving. Uh, let me know in the comments. I'll go jump on there and read them at the, in a sec. But I appreciate you being here and thanks for your enthusiasm for the Figma course. A lot of work went into it. Thanks to the Bring Your Laptop team for helping me get this out and live to you at bringyourlaptop.com. I wish I could end it there. <laughs> now I'm going to end it.